here to open your eyes. I'd like to take you on a journey with a friend of mine, Victor, a young man who's blind as he makes his way to an interview for his dream job. Victor wakes up at 5 a.m. to eat breakfast and get ready. His wife has taken the time to lay out his clothes for him. After getting ready, he steps out of the house, kisses his wife goodbye, and unfolds his cane. He makes his way down the cluttered street, tapping his cane as he goes along, dodging people, trash cans, advertising boards, each one making sure he can get around it. He then keeps going until he gets to a busy street that he now needs to cross. He feels for the traffic light, but there's no button. He can hear the busy cars whizzing past him, and he's hesitant to cross. Suddenly, a group of brave students make a mad dash across the street. But again, Victor's hesitant. He waits and waits until he can slowly hear the screeching of the brakes of the cars, and they come to a stop. He nervously tips his cane onto the tar and steps off the sidewalk and crosses the road, hoping no car is going to jump the red light. Once on the other side, he arrives at the train station where he swipes his card, goes down the escalator, and tries to orientate himself among the dense crowd, but he can't find the edge of the platform. He's missed his first train. When the second train arrives, Victor boards and looks for the designated handicapped seat, but there isn't one. Finally, when the train gets to his destination, he gets off and makes his way to the surface where he's standing outside the building of his job interview. He knows he's late. He taps his cane as he walks in and is directed to the elevator where he feels the buttons and presses for number six. Now there's no one inside the elevator with him to tell him if it stops on the right floor. He waits nervously and realizes that he's just got to go. He walks outside the elevator, tapping his cane, this time along the skirting board, counting or looking for a fade, meaning there's a door. He lifts up his hand to feel for a plaque, looking for a number of the room. It's smooth. He's late and nervous, and he continues to go, tapping his cane, counting each fade, until he gets to the room he assumes is the room that his interview is taking place. He waits. Finally, a pair of footsteps come down the passage and the person greets him annoyingly. Victor is late and the interviews have gone on without him. Before I continue, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Stephanie Cowper and I am a disability advocate. I've always had a passion for helping the community and technology. And in the last two years, I've managed to bring those two together. I had a eureka moment and the heavens began to sing when I realized that I could use technology for the good of humanity. I was 22 years old and blissfully naive. I mean, why couldn't I change the world? I was in my final year of university and I was fortunate to spend three months studying at a world-class university in California. My major was technology entrepreneurship and I found myself in the heartbeat of Silicon Valley. The point of technology entrepreneurship was to teach us how to form a tech startup and I knew I wanted to help people. I formed a group, and one person in particular stood out, a tall electrical engineering master's student from Italy, Giacomo. The question remained, who are we going to help? It was quite a logical process. After consideration, we found ourselves staring at an industry that's often untouched by small tech startups, the disability industry. Then, looking further, we realized that one group in particular seemed to be overlooked, the blind, visually impaired, and deafblind community. Now, disability is an umbrella term. It's a health problem, but it's also a complex phenomenon. A person may have an impairment such as blindness, but you are in fact disabled by the environment. A simple example would be, if you are blind and you went to a restaurant over the weekend, you were handed a menu. Now you can read, sure, but you read braille. And because we live in an ableist world, the menu was in print. 
This is just one small example of how the world works against you when you have a disability, rather than for you. We live in a time where a waitress will bring you a high chair for your child to sit in, but you can't expect the same for a braille embossed menu. Accessibility means access. It means that people with disabilities can live inclusive in society. It means that everyone has the equal chance to perceive, to understand, to engage, and to participate in their physical and digital worlds around them. Now, in a world where people with disabilities are the, are the, are the greatest minority group, why does society keep, to, keep turning a blind eye? I mean, there's, is it really worthwhile making everything accessible? Are there enough people to merit it? The answer is yes. According to the World Health Organization, there are one billion people who have a disability on our planet. That's one in every seven people. And to put it into perspective, this auditorium today seats 450 people. And if our environment allowed for it, there would be 64 people here with a disability. They would actually fill up the first three rows sitting in front of me. And yet again, society seems to look the other way. Another shocking fact is the fact that people with disabilities are less likely to be employed. Out of the 258 million visually impaired people on the planet, less than 1% have a job. After speaking with a friend of mine, Chris Fenter, who's also known as the blind scooter guy, he said something that struck me. He said, there's a difference between being unemployed and unemployable, and that people with disabilities are not unemployable. They may have the necessary skills and knowledge to be able to do a job successfully, but they need the right tools and environment to do so. And in today's world, where companies have put so much effort into making sure that they have a diverse workforce. For some reason, they've turned and looked the other way when it comes to employing people with disabilities. But come on, isn't it difficult? Isn't it difficult to employ someone with a disability? No, not at all. There's a term, reasonable accommodation, in the workplace. And basically it means modifying a job, the workplace, or how things are done at your work so that people with disabilities have equal opportunity to employment. And here's a few examples that you and the companies you work for can do. You can change the hours of a job for someone like Victor who takes longer to get to work. You could raise or lower a desk or equipment for someone in a wheelchair. You can install screen magnifiers for people who are visually impaired. Or how about telecommunication software for someone who is deaf? Now, these really aren't eye-bogglingly, jaw-droppingly difficult solutions that you and the companies you work for can do. Now, I have to admit, I'm quite a tech nut. And I'm always excited when new technology comes out that help people with disabilities. And yet, the trend continues to be in hardware. And hardware is expensive. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, this expensive hardware is actually inaccessible to the people who need it. I think it's time I take you back to my entrepreneurship class and what Giacomo and I built, or what he built, and what we've been working on every day since. We found ourselves exploring the world of digital accessibility. We learned how a blind person uses a smartphone, how they do everyday tasks, and the struggles that they face. We created a platform that connects blind, visually impaired, and deafblind people to sighted volunteers like yourselves all around the world. An example would be if I wanted to heat up my pizza. I could take a picture of the pizza using my B-Specular app. It would then be sent to a community of sighted people who would then reply back in seconds saying, hi, Steph, you can heat up your pizza for eight minutes on 180 degrees centigrade. Enjoy. It's that easy. Now, we know that you, as a sighted person, have a very busy life. Your days are filled with back-to-back -back meetings, you're taxiing your children around, and you're just trying to catch a break. 
So the traditional forms of volunteering just aren't possible anymore. So how about this? The next time you're at a grocery store, why not take out your smartphone and use the Be Specular app to help someone who's blind? Now, you could be in a meeting, and suddenly a blind person asks you a question, and you freak out. Don't worry. We send the question out to multiple sighted people so that as many people who, who are available can reply. So the fact that you're busy is pretty much the whole point. Our small startup has put the smart back in smartphone. It's basically an extension of who you are. You carry it around with you everywhere. So why not use it for good? But in a world with the internet and smartphones, we've become more connected than ever. But for some reason, we've lost this human connection. I think it's time we opened our eyes. I'd like to take you back to Victor's journey and what his journey would have been like had he gone to his job interview in a society that was accessible. Victor wakes up at 5 a.m. to get ready and eat breakfast. He lays out his shirt and tie, he takes out his smartphone, takes a picture with the B Specular app, and asks, does my shirt and tie match? Within seconds, someone replies saying yes and wishes him luck for his interview. He steps outside his house, kisses his wife goodbye, and unfolds his cane. He walks down an uncluttered street, tapping his cane as he goes along until he reaches the busy street he needs to cross. He feels the street post and presses the button, indicating someone would like to cross. It beeps three times, and gradually, one by one, the cars come to a halt. Now, like the pedestrians around Victor, the motorists, too, recognize his white cane, and they let him cross safely. Tapping his cane again on the other side of the street, he gets to the subway. He swipes his card and goes down the escalators. He taps his cane on the tiles until he feels the bumpy surface, which means he's at the edge of the platform. He waits for his train, boards, and takes a seat in the designated handicapped chair. When he gets to his destination, he climbs off the train and makes his way to the surface in front of the building of his interview. He's excited and feeling confident. He walks into the building, tapping his cane until he gets to the elevator. He feels the buttons and feels for the number six in Braille. He presses it. The elevator then beeps six times. Once for every floor, it passes. On the sixth floor, the doors open, and Victor takes a deep breath. He continues to tap his cane, this time on the skirting boards, and waits until it dips, meaning there's a door. He raises his arm to feel for a plaque, Aha, the Braille says he's at room 601. He is looking for room 604. Confidently, he strides down the passageway, counting three doors further until he gets to room 604. He folds up his cane, puts it in his bag, straightens his tie, takes a deep breath, and knocks on the door. Now, I can't tell you whether or not Victor got his dream job, but what I can say is that his journey where society was inclusive to someone like him, it meant that we gave Victor a fighting chance. <laughs>